Android Studio Bumblebee, also known as version 2021.1, is now available for download. This release brings a lot of UI polish and new features in various parts of the IDE, such as profilers, inspectors, design tools, and more. There are also many internal changes, including the new resource shrinker, lint build cache support, a unified Gradle test runner for more repeatable tests, and new Android Gradle plugin APIs for plugin and library authors. Let's see all of those in more detail. First, for users of Compose, our next generation UI toolkit, Android Studio Bumblebee brings interactive preview. When turned on, it lets you test interactions such as taps or animations on your preview composables and see the effects right in the preview window. Taking a step back from Compose and into the world of XML, Android Studio's Layout Editor and Layout Validation tool gained a set of predefined reference devices that let you quickly preview your screens on a variety of form factors, such as phones, tablets, and foldables. If you use animated vector drawables in your apps, we have another tool for you, the AVD Animation Preview, which lets you quickly play those animated drawables in the IDE. That's quite a lot of options to preview your work without even having to deploy your app to a device. But once you decide to do it, Bumblebee now offers a new Device Manager UI to help manage both emulators and physical devices. You can access it here on the right-hand side to see a list of devices as well as create new ones. When running an emulator, you will notice it now appears embedded in the Android Studio interface by default, which you can change in settings. On the Physical Devices tab, you can see attached devices and initiate Wi-Fi pairing for ADB debugging without requiring a cable connection. To use wireless debugging, generate a QR pairing code with Android Studio, and then just scan it with your Android 11 or higher device, and you're connected. Let's switch to some of the inspectors and profilers that you can use to debug and improve your app, as we have quite a few changes in this area. First up, the layout inspector gained two new features. For Compose, you can now inspect semantic information, which is used for accessibility and testing. To find views that have semantic information attached, select Highlight Semantic Layers. Now click on any of the layers that are not grayed out. Here, for example, you can see both the button's own declared semantics, as well as those that were merged in from its child view. If you want to save the current state of the Layout Inspector so you can come back to it later, you can now export a snapshot from the Layout Inspector. To open it again, simply go to File, Open, and select the file you saved in the previous step. Moving on to other minor changes in App Inspectors. The Background Task Inspector now incorporates information previously available in the Energy Profiler, namely Jobs, Alarms, and Wake Locks. And the Network Profiler is now the Network Inspector, and can be found on the App Inspectors tab. Speaking of profilers, Android Studio Bumblebee brings support for the new Profilable Manifest flag, which lets you use certain profiler features with apps that are not debuggable. Up until now, there was no way to profile apps without the performance overhead of debugging symbols. With a profilable flag, apps can now run with performance that is as close as possible to the release version. To use it, it's best to create a new build type, give it a name such as profilable, for example, and set the debuggable property to false. Then in the build types manifest, add the profilable tag like so. Now select your new profilable variant and run the app, then connect the profiler as usual. Note that only CPU and memory profiling can be used, and some functionality of the profilers will not be available, such as non-native allocation tracking, initiating heap dumps, event timeline, and API-initiated traces. The CPU profiler got some updates in Bumblebee. It uses SimplePerf to capture traces by default, you can now collapse nodes that are not relevant for trace analysis and use the new frame data track for easier jank detection. The Android Gradle plugin version that comes with Bumblebee is 7.1. It contains a new test runner that will now be used by default when running instrumentation tests from Android Studio. This improves the consistency of your test results when running tests from the IDE, command line, and CI server. 
It shouldn't have any impact on how you write your tests or run them from the IDE. However, if you do find any problems, please report a bug so we can investigate. The AGP Upgrade Assistant received UX improvements and can now migrate deprecated DSL forms of properties to their new forms. So please migrate before the old syntax is removed in Android Gradle Plugin 8, as outlined in our AGP roadmap. When creating new projects, the Android Gradle plugin is now configured to use non-transitive R classes by default. In short, this can avoid unnecessary recompilation of unaffected code whenever a resource is added or removed. It does mean, however, that you now have to refer to the R classes by their proper package name and not by the package names of their parent modules, as they will no longer resolve transitively. Here are some more changes in AGP. The new resource shrinker now works with feature modules. The lint task is cacheable, so incremental builds are faster, and more parts of the variant and artifact APIs for Gradle plugin authors are stable. Plus, you can now get access to even more build artifacts. We just concluded a series of Matt Skills videos and articles on the topic of extending your builds using these APIs, so please check them out if you're interested in this topic. And finally, for authors of Android libraries, we extended publishing support with the ability to configure variants and optionally include Javadocs and sources. Please refer to our release blog for more information about Android Studio Bumblebee. Help us test your projects with the next iteration of Android Studio, codenamed Chipmunk, and file any bugs and feedback on our issue tracker, linked in the description. Hope you enjoy the new features and fixes. Until next time.